Hello fellow birders, my name is Dennis Cania. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the five wren species that show up in DuPage County. On the DuPage Birding Club Education Channel, we'll be discussing all things bird related. And as I mentioned, we'll be discussing the five wren species that show up in DuPage County. And here they are, here are our five wren species. And let's just take a quick overview of these um, and look at their common characteristics so that we can identify all of those as being wrens. And one of the first things that you'll notice is that these are all little brown birds, uh, but they do have some things in common like the barring that we see in all of them. This is house wren here and you can see a lot of barring in the wing and at this angle you're not seeing too much of the barring here in the tail, but there is barring there as well. Jump down here to sedge wren, you see the same thing. Um, you have this barring or checkering that goes on in the wing and also in the tail. And now we're at sedge wren or marsh wren and you can see the same thing once again. So all of these species do have that characteristic of the barring in the tail and in the, in the wing. Uh, another thing that you can look at is that the, uh, the bill is the same really on all these species. And quite often when I discuss these birds, I don't really talk too much about the bill. And, it's something that we should probably be focusing on more in uh, these discussions as well as uh, your observations in the field. When I get uh, you know, people coming up to me and asking me about a bird that they saw, they go into a lot of detail describing uh, some of the plumages, but they never say anything about the bill. And that's uh, something that we should not be ignoring. We should be taking a close look at that. So note that the bill shapes on all of these birds are very much the same. Um, you'll notice that some of these uh, birds have a varying degree of a supercilium with probably the strongest being on the Carolina wren here. And you see the very bold white supercilium. And next uh, strongest would probably be the marsh wren, although in this example, you don't see a very strong supercilium here, but that's probably the second strongest one. Uh, and we'll see some other examples that'll, that'll show that. And after that, we're probably looking at sedge wren for a mod moderately uh, strong supercilium and Winter wren is in that same uh, boat. And then house wren has probably the weakest uh, supercilium. And in some cases, you don't even see that it exists at all. So we'll see that in some of the examples coming up. So here are our charts from Fermilab for the last 33 years of survey work. And you can see that uh, we have records for all five species. Um, house wren is uh, a species that is with us as a breeding species and it does show up in mid-April and is with us all the way through the breeding season, all the way through the fall and well into October before they disappear. Finding them outside of that range is actually pretty unusual. Uh, the next species we have to look at here is winter wren, which we see only as a migrant. And it shows up uh, in the very latter part of March and all through April and by the beginning of May, we pretty much are not getting too many winter wren records anymore. And then they're not with us until the fall, and then most of our records are coming from October. Sedge wren and marsh wren have pretty much the same pattern uh, of abundance or appearance in the county. And you can see that they're coming in at the latter part of April, and they're with us through the breeding season uh, and all the way through October. We're seeing Marsh wrens persisting further into the uh, late fall, and so we are getting more and more records in November and even on occasion um, in December. They're showing up on Christmas counts on rare occasion. Carolina wren is a species that we don't have a lot of records for for the count um, for Fermilab, but they are found throughout the county and are actually our only resident species. And so we do have records, uh, if you go on eBird for certain sites, um, I used uh, Waterfall Glen as an example, and I was showing um, that we had records from January all the way through December. And so sporadically uh, found, but, but they are found through the, the entire year. And it's a little bit ironic that this is our only resident uh, wren species because it's, it's really more of a southern species. And they are um, showing up more and more here in the northern part of the state. Um, when we do get a severe winter, that seems to really knock them back, but uh, they are trying to get a little bit of a foothold up here, and so um, we do find them throughout the entire year. So let's start out with our winter wren. 
Um, it's the wren that we probably have the smallest window of opportunity to see. And um, you can see that it does have those characteristic features making it a wren. It does have all the barring in the wing. We can see it has barring in the tail and uh, it does have that wren shaped bill. So what sets this wren apart from the others is the fact that it does have this extremely short tail, by far the shortest tail of all the wrens that we have to look at. And it is very heavily barred underneath. So this dark barring goes all the way up the belly and into the lower part of the breast. You can see that on this individual as well. And this bird, since it's turned around, we can even see that that barring goes into the undertail covers. So it's very heavily dark. Uh, barred all, all through the under parts. And overall, this bird will look dark compared to our other wrens that we'll see in the woodlands. It does have a bit of a supercilium. It's not always real strong, but it is noticeable in the field. So we can watch for that. It's an all dark crown. So overall, very, very dark bird. Um, this bird likes to frequent um, bank undercuts and um, root tangles and down trees. So those are areas where it likes to forage um, in the woodlands. And for the most part, it is a woodland species. We, we do on occasion find them in tree lines or edges of fields, but for the most part, you would expect to see this in the woodlands. So moving on, our other, um, one of our other woodland species and the most common wren that we have would be the house wren. And this is a bird that we can use as our benchmark for comparing all the other wrens. Uh, since everyone should be fairly familiar with this bird, we get them in our backyards, we get them in gardens and parks and in some of our natural woodlands, of course, as well. You can see it's a very, very pale bird compared to what we just saw on that winter rim. In both of these examples, there's just a hint of a supercilium, it's just barely visible. And in the field, sometimes you don't see any supercilium at all. You can see on this individual, there's a little bit of barring going on, but it's on a very pale breast. You can see just how pale this breast is as well. And you certainly do not have the strong barring that you had on the winter rim. This tail is much longer. See that in both cases here, very long tail compared to what we just had on winter rim. And this is the one wren that probably, if you're gonna see a wren where its tail is not cocked up, it would be um, this, this wren here. Uh, on occasion, they will cock that tail upward, as we see here, but quite often they're letting it hang down like this. So uh, if you do find a wren and it's not uh, hoisting that tail up in a cocked position, uh, chances are you're looking at a house wren. But you'd probably realize that beforehand just because of how pale this bird is. So our other woodland species um, would be the uh, Carolina wren. You can see just dramatically different from those other two woodland species that we just talked about. You can see that it has a much warmer color on the upper parts. It's a very, very rufousy color. And the under parts are also very warm as well. It's a very, very orangey buff underneath here. So uh, those two colors set this bird apart from uh, the other wrens we've talked about so far. It does have those other typical wren patternings like the barring in the tail and the barring in the wings. It does have by far the strongest supercilium of all the uh, wrens that we're talking about. You can see it's very bold and white, and it's a very long supercilium. It reaches way back over here into the nape area. So it's a very, very long, wide supercilium. Now we're going to move into some of our grasslands and wetlands. And so in this case, the grassland bird uh, is um, the sedgerem, and we can see um, does have those wren characteristics, the barring in the tail, the barring in the wing. And in this case, um, it's a very, very heavy barring or checkering effect that we get in the wing here. And that busy pattern along with a very busy pattern of the back is somewhat diagnostic for this species. You see a very dark back with a lot of white streaks on it. And you can see that here as well on this individual. So it's very, very busy patterned in those areas and it also has a lot of streaking in the crown. It's really the only uh, wren that we have that has streaking in the crown. So it's a dark crown with these very pale streaks running through it. Very pale underneath, gets buffy towards the uh, lower flanks and the undertail covers. Um, but the key thing I think to be focusing in on here is all that busyness in the wing and back, and then the fact that it does have a very streaky crown. You do, it does have a supercilium, but again, not a very strong supercilium. It's noticeable in the field, 
but not jumping out at you like um, marsh wren or Carolina wren would. So speaking of marsh wren, here, here's that species. Again, has all those wren characteristics. You can see the barring in the wing here, you can see barring in the tail. But what sets this bird apart um, is that it does have wing covers that are very, very rufousy. It has a very, very rufousy rump and it has a very dark crown. And that dark crown helps to offset a fairly bold whitish supercilium. So um, probably the closest wren habitat wise um, to marsh wren would be that sedge wren. And you can see just how different the patterning is in the wing compared back to that sedge wren wing. And the crown, if you recall, on the sedge wren was very, very streaked. So those are some key things to help you separate these um, two wrens that would be found not in the woodlands, but more in the open lands. So here's a few things that you can keep in mind as you're trying to separate out those, those uh, wrens. The winter wren is the one with the very, very short tail. It has very dark barring below, and overall it looks very, very dark. And it does have a, a supercilium, but it's a fairly weak supercilium. House wren in comparison is the dullest wren of all that we have to deal with in the field. Um, there's hardly any real markings to go on, especially in the face. Very, very pale face, um, very plain face, and very pale below. Carolina wren, on the other hand, is, uh, has a very strong patterning. It has a very strong, long, white supercilium. Uh, it does have those very rich, rufousy upper parts and uh, kind of a cinnamon buff uh, underparts. So very distinctive compared to our other wrens. Sedge wren has that very streaky crown. It has a weak supercilium and busy patterning going on in both the wing and the back. The marsh wren does have um, that busy patterning in the back, but the wing is going to look quite different because it has uh, rufous wing covers. And it's also very rufous on the rump. It does have a well-defined supercilium, much more so than the um, sedge wren, and it does have a dark crown. So thanks for taking the time to view this video. Hopefully we've given you some bird food for thought, and I hope you'll join us again in the future as we explore all things bird related.